In this example, I'm going to explain some basic language syntax here in the scripting basics. Just go over some things, how to get started with the language and just flow into really programming and getting this all to work together. So we'll look at that file. It's the language syntax.php and that's in our scripting basics folder, as you can see here, language syntax. So now at the top, like I said, we just have something here, two different lines. So that signals two different sections of PHP code. No big deal. It's just going to parse them as separate blocks. But really, if it's top down, it really is just going to get parsed one thing after the next because it's going to get parsed top down. Each line is going to be read in by the PHP interpreter. Okay, so we can ignore this for now. We'll see that later. This is a special server variable using an array. The dot notation is just concatenating the string together, putting this part with that part. You might be familiar with a plus sign in JavaScript, for example, or even other functions to do that. A semicolon is always necessary to end any line. If you don't put a semicolon, then it could mean that that line will continue to the next line. It can continue that way. We'll see examples of that. But to end the line, you're going to have to put a semicolon. Otherwise, you get the error. So that's just something. Syntax errors are not fatal, but they're just syntax errors, meaning the syntax isn't working correctly. And as you can see, we didn't even get it there for that particular example. But in most cases, you're definitely going to get a syntax error if you don't have a semicolon. This is only one line there, so you're not going to have to worry about it. But if we eliminate it here, where there's another line here, it's going to say, okay, well, I parsed this, I know what this does. And when it gets to the next line, it's expecting something else that's going to relate to this. If you don't put it there, well, that's when you get your syntax error. And you'll see this, we'll talk about this as well. This is telling you the exact line number where that's going to give you that particular error, line 16. So in your editor, you wanna make sure that you have line numbers set on. So in Dreamweaver, for example, we would just click up here to the options and have line numbers on, otherwise you don't see them. So line numbers are very, very important. They're going to help you. So more about the language syntax. Okay, so we have comments. Comments are human readable. That means that the, the computer parser, the PHP parser is not going to read them. It's, it's just going to ignore them. Jump from here, skip that, and just go right to here. This is for us. And if you put comments throughout your code, it allows you to explain what you were doing. You can remember what you were doing. Other people that look at your code can understand what you were trying to do. And it really is helpful to do that. So I try to comment whenever possible. This is one way to do it with the number sign. Another way to do it would be with the double forward slash, and that's only for a single line. You can use those two different notations. Anything afterwards, even that space, is all comment. So it says this is a comment. You can put it as long as you want, one line. Now, if you want to go to a, an additional line, then you're going to need to use this syntax, which is forward slash asterisk, and then multiple lines that come after it are all going to be commented. If we got rid of this, it's going to assume that everything else is commented. So you want to put that at the end, which is the opposite of that symbol, asterisk, forward slash, and that means this ends that comment area. That's pretty easy stuff. But those are just for you. Instructions, information. Now when you deal with more of PHP, we're going to look at different things dealing with strings, how to put strings together, and how to manipulate numbers, for example, but you can see the basic syntax of how things look. Dollar sign is always going to be in front of a variable. Anytime we give a variable name, now this is different than other scripting languages, you're going to have a dollar sign in front of that. If you don't, then it's not going to know what you're talking about. It's going to think that you're looking at a function, for example, and or a type of operation that needs to be performed based on what PHP has installed within its language itself, and that's really not what you want to do. So you always put a dollar sign in front of your variables. You just need to get used to it. When you deal with for loops, for example, it might be a little bit strange to do that, but we'll see that, and it's pretty straightforward. Now, this is just a particular value, and you can see that these are quoted strings. So this is a numeric value. It's not a date or anything like that. It's a numeric value with a decimal place and then four decimal place values there, four placeholders, and then the semicolon. A string has quotes. Anything within the quotes are considered just text 
that's placed into this variable here. So dollar sign name is a variable that holds Brad Miller, for example. You can use multiple lines. Dollar sign X is equal to 10, semicolon. These are multiple lines, meaning that these are multiple statements, and you can put them on one line. So instead, you could make them as separate lines, hit the carriage return line feed and get them all separately. But a lot of times when you assign variables in the beginning, you can just do them all on one line. And you can see that the red here indicates that this is an integer and this is really just set up for Dreamweaver. Your editor might be different. We'll save that because we get rid of that syntax error. Now, also, when you're, when you're working with more complex numerical data and processing of that data, you're going to work with parentheses a lot. And this is just straight algebra. So if you're familiar with algebra, then you know how this works. This in these parentheses here, 10 plus 22 will get executed first, times 4 after this value is created, which is 32. This is going to get executed to find the value before the division. This is a division sign. And then we have this which takes the variable and adds one. So whatever y is equal to, 22 in this case, then it's going to add one to it. So this is done separately. This is done separately. When these two values are met, then the division occurs and that is stored in result. And it is a sign because of the equal sign. So we'll look at more of that when we deal with types, but you might be used to the C way of doing things, C, C plus way or Java way, JavaScript way of incrementing values. Dollar sign i is going to get added one value there, incremented by one. And here it's going to be decremented by one. We'll see this as well. So instead of doing it like this, dollar sign i is equal to dollar sign i plus one. We just do it shorthand dollar sign i plus plus semicolon. So just different simple things about the language that you might be familiar with from other languages. And it's just really bringing everybody together. If you're new, so programming in general, this is definitely going to be very, very helpful, but I'm going to help everybody out as we move along. A lot of people do come from JavaScript, especially if they're working on the client side, and they also come from Flash and ActionScript, which is essentially ECMAScript, which is JavaScript. So that's really a great way to, to get started in PHP because it's very similar, and everything really seems to go back to C, and even C++, of course, is really based on C. So this is really helpful if you are an advanced programmer as well. It just really puts things together. We'll talk more about strings and how they work. Strings are just text values, how to concatenate them together. This is an if statement. You see that we have these brackets here. These separate separate blocks of code that could be within this area here. And you could have multiple lines, not a big deal. So we can have multiple lines here, as many as we want within these brackets. We'll see that as we move forward. You want to see the looping and all the control sections of videos to see how that is going to output things for us. And notice we're just doing prints. We're just printing that information out. We'll see how that works. And constants. We define constants in different ways than you might expect in other languages. It's very neat and robust, and it's very interesting that this is how you would define a constant. A constant is only defined once. You can't reassign that value. Upper limit, once it's assigned to a thousand, it's always going to be a thousand. So this is a constant and it's very helpful with programming systems that aren't small. So we'll refresh. No more errors. There we go. And if you notice this information here was executed at the top here, as you can see, anything that was executed at the top, here's the print statement. That's the only place we actually print anything out to the browser or to this file. And then you can see that that information is added there, right here at the top. It doesn't affect anything here. Here, I just echo out the exact same code or similar code for you to see in this file. Makes it easy for you. But this PHP isn't actually executed. It was all put in there as HTML. You can see we have special symbols here that are putting in quotes, for example, and that is all put in there as HTML. And if we look at the design view, you can see that this isn't PHP, and you'll see this a lot as we work through the training. This is just for you, so you can see exactly what I'm talking about right in the example. Everything we actually process there, which is just that one line, is processed here at the top.
and I have a hard break here that makes it go on separate lines. We'll see a lot of different ways to process our text in the form of HTML or just straight text. But those are the language basics. Make sure you end in a semicolon. Make sure you have that dollar sign in front of your variables, and we'll take it from there.